What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and here I've got the brand new HTC One A9. Now, a lot of you may not even know about this phone, but I thought it was important to share it on this channel, and I'll get to why in just a second. Let's just say this thing looks awfully familiar. So in this video, I'll be doing a full comparison of the new HTC One A9 to the iPhone 6S, a phone it competes with even though it's not on the same price level. So let me go ahead and get this thing unboxed and I'll show you what I'm talking about with this new phone. Now HTC isn't doing too good this year. The HTC M9 bombed, you know, nobody really wanted it. It was too similar to the old M8, but I gotta tell you, the HTC A9 is something different altogether. So as soon as I slip this out of here, just let me know what you think about this design. Where have we seen it before? It looks awfully familiar to the 6 and 6S design. However, when actually confronted, HTC claimed that Apple copied them with a the unibody design back in 2013 and with the actual antenna lines on the back. So although this thing looks familiar, there's a lot going for it that the iPhone doesn't have. And I'll be completely 100% honest with you guys. I really, really wanted to bash on this phone from what I saw in pictures. After using it in person, my perspective changed completely. Now there's no denying though, it looks an awfully lot like the iPhone 6S. The overall design, the curved edges, the screen is even curved, all of the antenna lines, I mean it's awfully similar, the proportions especially, but at the same time, I love the design more than the iPhone 6, and yeah, I just said that. I'm sorry, but this thing just feels so good when you're holding it. It's not as rounded as an iPhone 6S, making it easier to hold, and I love the brushed aluminum on the rear. The effect looks really nice. It adds a premium touch to this phone, and the price tag is what I can't believe about this phone. For just $500, you can get this phone that rivals the iPhone 6S in some areas. So the display is a little bit larger, but at the same time, the phone's not that much harder to hold. As I said, the edges make it very comfortable and it does have a micro SD card as well. As you can see right there, there are two trays in there. So ports, speaker, everything looks very similar. Uh, One-handed usability on the iPhone 6S is gonna be a little bit easier. You know, because of that larger display, you're gonna have a little bit of a tougher time reaching the upper areas of the display. But overall, both very comfortable phones, both very similar, uh, both fingerprint magnets, but I love the design on both. Gotta say, the A9, man, I was really surprised just how great and premium this design feels. Now the HTC A9 is a little bit of an interesting size. It's right in between the iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus with that five inch display. However, I do like it. You know, the beautiful display technology does help a lot. But size wise, these phones are extremely similar. They weigh the same, even though the A9 is a slightly bigger phone. Quality is top notch on both. So if you have any doubts, you know, you shouldn't have any. These are both premium handsets made of the best materials. Now, when it comes to displays, after using them for a while, I gotta say, I am very, very satisfied with both. HTC made a great choice in the panel. The AMOLED has great color reproduction, very, very sharp, and I love how bright it is. The iPhone, you know, really great LCD IPS technology, viewable from many angles. However, the AMOLED display on the A9 is just a little bit better when it comes to color, and I absolutely love it. So, no complaints with either one of these they're both great but color wise and brightness wise i gotta give it to the htc a9 now the 6s though it has that unique 3d touch technology no other manufacturer besides huawei offers anything like it and it's going to be a major selling point of the 6s for a while before the competitors start to catch up i mean basically it allows you to shortcut into areas of different apps add a lot of functionality to your device and growing every single day right now it's a little thin but basically with 3D Touch, you can save time and add functionality to your device. And there are live photos, something that the HTC A9 doesn't have. And with 3D Touch, it can be a really nice feature to have. So relive memories just by 3D touching on an image and inside your photo roll. And it'll basically show you a couple seconds before and after of the photo and audio. And it can be a really nice touch. Now, understandably, being a budget-priced phone, the HTC A9 has mid-level performance. It doesn't have the same specs as you'd find on a higher-end Samsung phone or the new Nexus 6P, but it still does have pretty good specs on paper, as well as a very reasonable amount of RAM and a healthy GPU. So in actual performance, I did a Geekbench, a GFX Bench, and then I ran some uh, applications just to see 
speed wise how this thing compares to an iphone 6s and it does just about as you'd expect so nothing too crazy it gets the job done but it's not going to be for high-end power users if you're buying this phone you have to understand it's not the most amazing performing device so next I did run GFX Bench and the iPhone 6S of course dominated here. The HTC A9 did all right, but in every single test, the iPhone 6S did have a higher score. Understandably, it has a six core GPU, whereas the HTC A9 has a budget GPU, although it did all right, you know, gaming is going to be on a completely different level on the iPhone success if you're into that. I also did launch some big games, you know, these are almost a gigabyte each, and I noticed that the HTC A9 does terrible when comparing it to an iPhone in terms of loading speeds. The game started up faster, everything loaded faster on the iPhone, so you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of time to wait for things to load, and actual performance in games is going to be better on the success as well, so just take a look at that. There's quite a delay when loading on the A9. So the iPhone certainly has an advantage here with graphical performance. Now getting into wireless, the iPhone 6S has a clear advantage. It has more LTE bands, so it's better for an international phone. It also has Bluetooth 4.2 and a MIMO enabled Wi-Fi chip. However, the A9 actually has higher upload speed for LTE, which no carrier takes advantage of yet, but it's there. And a couple other minor tests I ran. So browser score on the HTC A9 was much higher and this is due to Chrome, not the actual phone itself, but you're gonna have a better browsing experience with that guy. Actual fingerprint speeds on the A9 were wicked fast. I was very, very surprised to find that this thing activated almost twice as fast as the 6S in some cases, and I thought that was fast already. So the great thing about it that I like is your display doesn't even need to be on. You don't need to press any buttons. Just put your finger on the fingerprint sensor and boom, it unlocks right away. The 6S, due to the animations, it actually seems slower. If Apple got rid of those, the fingerprint sensor would be just as fast. I also tested the speaker output. The A9 actually has a built-in amplifier. I got 98.1 decibels. On the iPhone 6S, 100.9. So honestly, I was a little bit disappointed with the speaker quality on the A9. It's a little flat, a little tinny sounding. It's definitely a richer sound on the 6S. I also wanted to add that the A9 gets hot whenever doing something very intensive. I mean, I got temperatures up to 92 degrees and doing the same thing, such as downloading a one gigabyte application from the app store on the iPhone 6S, I only got about 86, 87 degrees. So definitely a huge difference there in terms of temperature. So on paper, megapixel size, you know, roughly the same, but feature wise, the A9 is a little lackluster. It doesn't even do 60 frames per second, although it does have optical image stabilization and it does have that dual tone LED flash and a sapphire crystal lens cover as well. Aperture is a little bit better, so supposedly it does perform better in low light. And let me tell you right off the bat, the HTC A9 has some very beautiful colors, very gorgeous, deep, juicy looking colors. However, take a look at that video. I mean, it's very jagged. That's because it doesn't support 60 frames per second, and I can't find out why. Almost every smartphone nowadays does, and it's very strange to see video that's only 30 frames per second next to 60 frames per second. It's obviously very jagged while moving it. Now, now, detail is very good. When you're holding it still, I notice that the quality is very acceptable, in some cases even outperforming the 6S, especially in lower light conditions. Take a look at some of these photos. Now, digital zoom also was very impressive to me. This duck picture is fully zoomed in, and you can see the quality is definitely better on the A9. Overall, great cameras. Now, the front-facing camera on both of these is very similar in nature. The 6S can't do 1080p though for some reason, but overall good, a little bit of wider angle on on the 6S. If you're looking for the best possible battery life, that can be found on the HTC A9. It features a bigger battery and overall better battery performing specs. And one of the most compelling reasons to get the A9 over the 6S is the price. You get a lot for that price tag. Just $500 gets you an unlocked 32 gigabyte base storage HTC A9 with upgradable storage up to 200 gigabytes. So if someone were to ask me, should I get this or the 6S? I would tell them this is everything I liked about this phone. For $500, 
I honestly would recommend this phone to anybody in that price range. It's a very well-built, solid phone. To me, it's basically an iPhone running a very clean version of Android. I do like the new HTC Sense. It's with a new Android version. And overall, man, this phone is top notch. I absolutely love it. It could be a little bit faster, but other than that, in most other areas, it does very well. The iPhone 6S also has a lot going for it. It is more expensive, but if you can stomach the cost, it's certainly worth that $150 increase. I mean, we can Keep phones for one to two years why not get the best you can but if you're on a budget five hundred dollars with the htc 9 will get you so much the iphone success can do the iphone success is just that extra cherry on top it's a little bit faster the camera does 4k video 60 frames per second and better slow motion overall you know these are both great phones but i would be happy at five hundred dollars with a9 if i had a little bit more money i would always go with the 6s though the htc a9 is certainly a better value for the money though at five hundred dollars i mean honestly i think it's the best budget smartphone right now the styling of an iphone with a clean user interface from android so i gotta give it to htc i like this phone a lot more than i thought i would they really put in a lot of effort into it you know you could say that they're copying it's certainly undeniable but they did improve upon the iphone in some areas so thanks so much for watching guys have a great day and know that whichever one you do choose you'll have a great time with either one peace